the uh, third in the series of monetizing Wi-Fi. Um, my name is Graham Bunting and um, I'm the regional lead here for iPass in the region. Um, today we are looking to try and uh, provide a, a slightly different slant on how we present this webinar. We're trying to make it a little bit more conversational and we're introducing one of our partners, uh, Hamish White, who's the founder and CEO of Mobilize Consulting. I'll introduce um, Hamish formally a little later on in the, uh, in the session. A um, little bit of housekeeping first. Uh, we are recording uh, this session, so um, it will be available online sometime afterwards. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the question area uh, on the um, uh, on the GoToWebinar bar, and we'll try and deal with those real time if we can, or certainly we'll we'll do them at the end um, given time. I think we've scheduled this for about three quarters of an hour, but you'll be pleased to know we've probably given you some time back at the end of this. We uh, we're looking to deliver a message to you and. Hopefully we'll do that in a slightly uh, shorter time frame. So, proceeding uh, into the deck, um, what we're going to cover today. So I haven't got a, a hard and fast agenda here in terms of one thing after another, but what we want to cover uh, is give you an introduction to IPOS. Who are we? What do we do? Um, clearly, as I've said, we're partnering today with, uh, with Mobilize Consulting and we'd like to uh, introduce Mobilize formally in terms of what they do. Uh, we're going to cover something around market trends and challenges for the MVNO community. Um, I don't think any of this is going to be new to you, but certainly it, uh, it will probably um, align with, uh, with what you're seeing as well. Um, more importantly, what we're looking to do is, you know, what's the meat and, and, um, and, and veg of this presentation? It's very much about how iPass and Mobilize in partnership can help you um, with the challenges that I, I guess we'll outline around retention, um, improved margins, customer experience, etc. We will open up for Q&A at the end, so uh, if you don't have anything um, in the, uh, the Q&A bar, then we'll certainly open up for, convers for, uh, for questions at the end. So, before I, uh, I do head into the, uh, the main part of the presentation, I thought I'd share this with you. If nothing else, it'll grab your attention. Um, we have, at iPass, just uh, produced a report um, off the back of uh, some research we've done, um, which shows very amusingly that uh, uh, Wi-Fi seems to be uh, more important than sex, chocolate, or alcohol. So we're probably in the right space. Uh, I'm sure there'll be people who, who don't necessarily share that view, but uh, but the, the report is available. If you'd like to know more and like to see the report, do let us know. We'd be uh, very happy to share that with you. Um, and just so you can see what the breakdown was in terms of uh, people's preference, this slide here shows you that 40% of those polled have Wi-Fi in first place. So hopefully that sets the scene for you. Um, so Wi-Fi, we uh, we live in a, a mobile world. I guess we uh, we probably would all agree on that. Uh, increasingly, we are consuming more of the stuff that we want to consume on a smaller screen, typically. Um, but certainly on the go. Uh, so mobile devices, so um, typically tablets uh, and um, mobile phones, um, but also uh, hybrid type devices, but very much on the go. And the statistics you can see here bear that um, particular uh, trend. A couple of other things, statistics that I, I came across fairly recently that I think also support that, and this is more about uh, people's patterns of calling. So we're seeing that people are calling more and more using uh, apps that uh, actually use data rather than a traditional voice type circuit. Um, and predictions are by 2019, Wi-Fi will account for 53% of mobile, mobile VoIP traffic in minutes of usage. So quite a staggering statistic, but probably not surprising to those people on the, uh, uh, on the call today. So we all need to be connected. iPass. Our role in this is actually helping to provide that connectivity. So we are effectively providing the world's largest Wi-Fi network. We have global reach with uh, around 120 countries, and that provides us with more than 57 million hotspots at the last count. And this is in, um, say, 120 countries across the world. Um, we are the Uber of the uh, Wi-Fi world in the sense that we own no hotspots but we have relationships with more than 160 networks. And we bring these all together seamlessly and give access 
via a, a simple uh, app that sits on your device. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later because that's not the only way in which we can access and, and particularly important, I think, for the community that's, uh, uh, that's on the call today. So our proposition, we believe, is nice and simple. The three things that we see here on the slide, sum it up, unlimited, everywhere and invisible. Unlimited, so we provide unlimited data, we don't throttle it, and we provide on one single network. So I suppose for us the concept of roaming is, uh, is negated in that we have one network. So unlimited access, we have unlimited devices, so you can use it on all of your devices. We're everywhere, we talked about that a little while ago. We've got uh, a very large footprint across the globe. And the last one is probably um, one of the most important in that it's all about the user experience. The user would um, typically not have to have a, um, a make conscious decisions about accessing uh, the service. The idea is that it's, it's a, as invisible as a cellular type of experience. So user, user experience is a key focus for us. Uh, this slide here gives you a sense of what that network looks like in terms of the footprint. So we've split it across the, uh, uh, the different parts of the globe. You can see quite clearly the numbers there. And also, just to give you a sense for the quality of the network. So quality is also an important element to this. And we actually have SIAs with all of the, uh, the people that, uh, that serve our community. Moving on now to um, a little bit of the technology. I'm not going to talk about it from a, a technology perspective, but we have some, some pretty clever technology which we call Smart Connect. That, um, that graphic you see in the background there is a, is a heat map of the, uh, the footprint, which gives you some idea of the coverage. Um, but Smart Connect is, uh, is essentially a bit of technology that helps us do a, a better job of uh, improving that user experience so that we always making sure that we connect the user to the best available hotspot. Also, it does a job of, uh, of helping us sniff out and identify networks, the ones that aren't currently part of our footprint. Um, and this, too, helps us to ensure that we're providing hotspots where people want to travel. So Smart Connect has a, a number of roles and a very important critical role in ensuring the user experience is, uh, is outstanding, but also that we continue to grow our footprint so that we can make sure that we have service where people want it. And the third component here is, uh, is SDK, our Software Developers Kit. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that's the essence of how we enable other people to leverage our capability using their own uh, particular flavor and brand of service. So we did say we'd talk a little bit about market trends and challenges in the MVNO community. Um, I, I guess, as I said earlier, none of this will appear as, a, as news to you. We're seeing an increased trend in, uh, in smartphone use. Still a lot of people not using smartphones, I know, but certainly it's a trend as we see um, more competition in that space. But actually what we're seeing is the way in which people are using those devices is, is changing enormously. Um, standard voice calls, we're seeing a huge decline in that. Um, and increasingly we're seeing people using different types of messaging and Perhaps to quote some uh, some well-known brands, things like WhatsApp. Um, I think people are using more and more Skype. And in the enterprise, we're seeing uh, more and more organizations using data services to, to put all their voice and uh, messaging traffic. Um, there are changes afoot around EU roaming charges, which we all know about. Um, I guess that's not fully baked yet. So what that will look like, um, I think, is probably subject more to opinion than fact. Um, but actually, we're also seeing um, an increase in data exclusive packages, so where there's no voice minutes at all. And again, I think that supports the trend that we're seeing generally. Some of the challenges, um, clearly around uh, customer retention, uh, network costs. Um, I think the, uh, some of the key reasons that, uh, that users are typically moving away and, and, and uh, choosing different services are based around costs. So we know that there's, a, there's always a, a background of churn, and I'm sure um, Anything that we can do to, uh, to reduce that will be very welcome. Um, everybody's looking for differentiation and new revenue streams, and I think this is something that plays very well into the proposition that we have here today. So um, I'm just about to uh, introduce Hamish to you, but uh, I, I guess what we're talking about here is how do uh, 
the MVNO community take advantage of a Wi-Fi first strategy um, to to drive some some improvements in the areas that we talked about, particularly around the uh, the increased margin, the uh, the reduced churn, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and new revenues. Um, and some of the some of the elements that uh, that we talk about here are things like Wi-Fi offload, offloading and increased footprint. Um, and a lot of people will choose a different route. So some might look to increase revenue through uh, adding and bundling new services, whereas others might decide that it's something that is is, is deemed as table stakes and something that helps people to uh, to remain sticky by adding additional value. Um, again, I'm not going to talk too much about the SDK at this stage, but uh, but certainly when I introduce Hamish, we'll uh, we'll talk about that. So um, I'd like to formally introduce you to our partner. Uh, Mobilize and uh, and their CEO and founder Hamish White. So welcome, Hamish. If you wouldn't mind just introducing yourself, telling us a little bit about uh, about Hamish White, about Mobilize Consulting, um, what um, what brings you to the MVNO space, and what's your journey been like to uh, to get here? Yeah. Hi, Graham. Hi, everyone. Thanks very much. Um, yeah. So a little bit about a little bit about us and and where we fit in this, I guess, ecosystem um, of of Wi-Fi and, and and our relationship with iPass. So, um, so we're we're a consultancy and a software company. Um, we effectively what we do is we build um, solutions for um, mobile service providers, and that can be MVNOs, it can be um, uh, OTT players. Um, and we also provide software uh, solutions um, and in particular the context of, of this webinar today is around Wi-Fi first solutions. So really um, uh, what we do is we provide expertise and uh, people to help um, MVNOs uh, uh, launch into the market or um, innovate with new products and services. Um, and that's end to end. So strategy, um, project management, technology solutions design, operation support, software development. But, but we also have um, a lot of capability in the business, a lot of experience. So if there's specific expertise that's required um, for custom solutions, we can also do that too. Um, so me personally, just a, a little bit of background around me. Um, so I've been in mobile for roughly 20 years now. I started in, in sunny Australia, a little bit different here in, in London. Um, from a weather perspective, but started my career out there. Um, I spent um, about four and a half years with Hutch and Ericsson um, in a managed service at a network uh, operations perspective, and then moved over to Europe and and um, worked with O2. Uh, and then it was with O2 I, I got some uh, first-hand experience with the MBNO business model, um, uh, launching the Tesco mobile business. And from there, an MBNO really struck a chord with me, so I, I jumped around the world setting up MVNOs. Um, I was out in the Middle East, I was in the US, um, and then a couple more in Europe um, before I set up um, Mobilize in 2011. Um, so had a had a had a, a quite a wide-reaching experience in different markets. Um, uh, you know, the fantastic thing about um, MVNO is is that um, there's always new challenges. You know, I've been doing this for a long time now, but there's always new things to learn, which I think is one of the things that keeps me excited about the model and. In particular, uh, you know, some of the challenges that I guess MVNOs are generally speaking, it's not just MVNOs, but it's, it's probably the, the mobile industry in general, but MVNOs in particular, um, because a lot of um, the principles around MVNOs is, is arbitrage. They buy from the operators and, and sell. So when margins get, get, um, get squeezed, then MVNOs need to find new ways to innovate and, and improve profitability. So what we've really been doing in this space with iPass um, is um, is we've known of these types of challenges uh, in the industry, and, and maybe Graham, if you wouldn't mind, mate, you could flick onto the onto the next slide there. Cheers. Um, so so you know we've been aware, I guess, of of, of challenges in the industry for for several years now, um, and, and I've called out, I guess, some of the key um, challenges that we find. Again, most of the guys on the call, most people on the call, would would be familiar with these, um, but uh, what we're seeing is increased competition, um, and that in particular um, is leading to, to decreased margins, um, generally speaking. Um, and what we're seeing is, um, although MVNO is, um, and the MVNO business model is still vibrant, and um, you know a lot of big players uh, are coming into the MVNO marketplace, you know that that. 
the, the fact that the big players are coming in also you know creates a problem for the pure mobile um, MBNOs that are that are existing out there. You know when you've got big behemoths like Sky and BT, um, you know coming into the marketplace with a mobile offering, um, which is uh, potentially a lost leader for them in that, that they're not looking to make a whole lot of money, particularly out of mobile, but they're looking to increase stickiness with a bundle of products um, and therefore um, you know, increase longevity from, uh, from, uh, from a customer, uh, the, the customer lifetime value. Um, that means that pure mobile players in the industry are facing quite competitive pricing um, from companies with huge marketing spend uh, and aren't necessarily look to, looking to earn revenues or profits, I should say, um, off mobile like uh, most of the traditional MBNOs are. So, um, so we've seen these problems in the marketplace. Um, you know, we, we talk to clients every day about how um, you know, new innovative um, solutions to, to increase margin and, and drive additional revenue. And, um, and, and Wi-Fi, uh, you know, with the advancements in technology and coverage of Wi-Fi, it, it's a very, very nice fit um, today for, for MVNOs um, to bring Wi-Fi into their product portfolio either as a revenue driver or as a, as a, as a profit driver um, by, by, by decreasing costs. So for, for us, the, the way that we arrived here, um, you know, with our relationship with iPass is, is that, um, you know, there's uh, a burning desire within the MVNO industry from our conversations and, and experience. Um, to bring in Wi-Fi um, into into the MVNO product set, but um, there hasn't necessarily been a partner out there that can offer this type of service like iPass, a truly global, seamless experience, um, and um, and who are willing to productize that and sell it individually. A lot of the operators um, out there, or the Wi-Fi service providers out there, are quite a closed wall, I guess, or closed garden um, about. Um, about how they offer their, their Wi-Fi services. So, um, so it makes perfect sense. You know, the technology is there, um, the coverage is there, um, and, um, and, 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 and the desire from MVNOs is there. So what we're trying to do is, um, is customise um, uh, the, the, the uh, iPass capability um, and asset set as much as we possibly can to fit into um, to, to MVNO's product set, so effectively they have a, a very seamless um, and packaged service um, that they can put out to their customer base. So that's, yeah, I think I probably waffled on a little bit there, Graham, but um, no, I think cool. first couple so did, of questions. Uh, yeah, no, I guess one of the things that would be, uh, be quite interesting, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure people on the webinar are curious to understand, um, given the fact we've talked about our two organisations, one of the things that's probably quite interesting for uh, for everybody to understand is why you chose to partner with iPass. I know you've touched on some of the uh, the issues that you've mentioned there, but you know why did you choose to partner with iPass, and and how does iPass fit into this market specifically? Yeah, so um, so the, yeah, I mean there's a there's a couple of um, I guess capability things which uh, sets iPass apart, um, but then there's also some broader relationship things as well. Um, on a capabilities perspective, um, you know, largest network, really seamless experience, um, some really unique selling points uh, around the security aspect as well um, that the the app and the SDK can provide, uh, which is a big pain point these days in in generally available public networks, uh, Wi-Fi networks. Um, so there's there's Unique selling points and value drivers out of the capability from iPass in itself, which don't exist, um, you know, with other Wi-Fi providers out in the industry. So that's that's a clear reason to want to do business with iPass over over anyone else. Um, uh, uh, but then, you know, iPass is a business; they're very um, forward-thinking, I guess, in this space. They're they're looking at Wi-Fi in a different way. Um, to to to, I think, what the industry um, looks at Wi-Fi. And um, and they've got a fantastic uh, team, um, you know, fantastic vision from from the leadership team, and and for us, uh, when you combine all those components together, in that the technology is is you know market leading, um, the team is um, you know really um, you know industry leaders in their thought processes and the way they're looking at Wi-Fi and the industry in general. For us to do a deal, it's a bit of a no-brainer. Um, 
uh, this is definitely the way that the industry is going from a, from a mobile perspective, complementing Wi-Fi with, with, with mobile. Um, so for us, it's, uh, it was an easy one to, to decide on. Excellent. Thanks for that. Um, I, I guess sort of segueing off it back into the, into the technology piece again, I, I introduced the concept of how we're connecting um, our users to the service via the iPass app. Um, and I talked about you know, the user journey, the user experience being a critical component to this. Um, given that, uh, and this is a phrase I, I picked up fairly recently, given that we know that we, uh, we're seeing people have increasing fatigue over apps or app fatigue, um, having additional apps on their devices is, um, is becoming less popular, I think. So I just wondered if you could explain your, uh, your um, thoughts around how this plays into the MBNO space, given we've touched on the SDK, etc. Can you perhaps explain the approach there, please, Amy? Yeah. Sure, yeah. I mean, that's a really important thing, I think, is, um, yeah, you're right, there is app fatigue, and there's, you know, one of the most important things, I think, with MBNOs is, is engagement, so they want to make sure that, um, you know, the more they can engage their customers, the um, increased chance they have of selling you services or, um, you know, maintaining, you know, that customer for a longer period of time, maintaining loyalty from that customer for a longer period of time. So it's really important that, you um, you know, whatever is presented into their business and what's presented into their product set uh, and then on down to the user is, is quite seamless. Um, so um, so uh, the, types of, the types of things that, that we've been looking at with, with potential MBNOs is, um, you know, taking the SDK um, um, in, and, and integrating it into an existing self-care app, for example, um, so that effectively you know what the user sees is just an, an additional tab on um, on a mobile application that they are already engaging with. There's there's not a there's not a complex or onerous um, you know setup process that they have to go to, and and, and we all know with apps um, the, the the harder it is, uh, or the more friction there is in a setup process, the less likely the user is to use it. So 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 the way that we're we're positioning. Um, you know our partnership with iPass to MVNOs is, you know, let us help you understand how do we take um, this technology and seamlessly embed it into your existing product set, product portfolio, um, to make sure that you're maximising the opportunity from Wi-Fi. Um, and that can be things like, you know, um, uh, a, a, a branded a branded service, you know, a branded app that's a Wi-Fi app, or it could be using the SDK integrated into their uh, existing product, existing uh, mobile application. So there's a lot of different scenarios um, uh, that you know, iPass is facilitating and Mobilize with its mobile hotspot product is facilitating for, for, for MVNOs. But in principle, what we try to do is we say, you know, this isn't a one-stop shop. How do we step back, help you as a business understand how this is going to fit into your, into your product portfolio and then we help um, develop, you know, the marketing plan, the sales plan, the technology, um, the user experience, the business processes, um, so that you know it's a seamless, um, it's a seamless experience for the users, and um, which ultimately uh, leads to, to 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 you know extended CLV, customer lifetime value, and um, and most opportunity for revenue growth. Excellent, all makes perfect sense, Hamish, and I guess that probably leads me nicely into. Um, I suppose the crux of this. Um, how would you expect the the MVNOs could position Wi-Fi into their existing proposition? Yeah, um, this is by far and away. Um, this is by far and away, probably, you know, the most common question that that we would find ourselves answering. And you know, I think um, I think one of the things is is that you know the the mobile industry it's a pretty well trodden path. Um, so uh, you know. Um, you know, there's an old. I think there's an old saying. And I'm probably going to get this wrong, but it's something like in marketing, there's no new concepts; they're just reused concepts. So, um, so a lot of a lot of stuff in mobile has been done before. And and one of the things that we're finding, um, Wi-Fi is quite new, and this is this hasn't really been done before. Um, uh, it, it has in small scale uh, operations, but truly integrating Wi-Fi seamlessly into a into a, an MBO's, um product portfolio is not something that's uh, that's necessarily, um, you know, there's not a lot of use cases and not a lot of um, experience that you can garner from other people or public sources and stuff. So, so what we find is is that, um, 
you know, not you know, uh, potential clients aren't necessarily saying this is exactly how we want this to work within our proposition because there's not, you know, there's no well-trodden path for them to know, you know, how do they how do they work with this product. What we're finding is is that they're saying, well, you know, we know instinctively, you know, we know that Wi-Fi is something that we want to include. Um, we believe in it. We we know that our users are going to believe in it. We know it's going to be good for our bottom line. But how do we how do we do this? How do we how do we productize this? How do we put it into our um, into our existing propositions? And, um, and and so our our approach is very consultative in that you know we we we, we look at their existing uh, existing propositions. We look at their market segmentation, and we really craft a um, you know a, um, a proposition for them that is. You know, is going to be successful for their target market. You know, um, so um, I guess you know some of the conversations have been around. Um, you know, different models can be. Do you do you offer this as a you know as a as a hygiene factor in that um, you are not charging the customer for this, but you are adding it as a um, uh, you know as a as a cost um, optimization tool. So you're driving your margin. Um, higher by reducing your costs and uh, as a Wi-Fi first solution. So integrating it into an existing app or or, or, um, or um, complementing it with uh, an OTT application like our switchboard application um, where you know traffic will first go over Wi-Fi um, and that will reduce costs. Um, so that's that's a, a bit of a you know that that's a you know, that, that's a, a bit of a no-brainer. Um, most MBNOs get that straight away. Um, you know, some of the other the other types of conversations that we've been having are, um, you know, do is this a, is it a paid-for service? You know, do you offer a 12-month subscription for X pounds, um, and that becomes an extra revenue line uh, for for users, and and it becomes about um, network network access uh, access and roaming coverage and um, all those types of things. Um, or is it a bundled product? You know, as a value shout, you know, as an MVNO, if you're selling tablets, devices, whatever, do you say, look, um, you get a better deal with us because we'll give you this Galaxy, um, maybe not the seven, um, <laughs> maybe, maybe let's let's use Apple uh, as an example, yeah. um, so people don't yeah get big burns in their uh, in their briefcases or something like that. But um, but yeah, Apple. Um, as an example, maybe um, you know they're offering an Apple device, uh, and as a marketing shout, they can say, "Come and get your Apple device from us, uh, and we'll include um, you know six months uh, free Wi-Fi access." Yeah, that so, makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So it's all these all these different types of um, scenarios, but I guess I guess um, where we're really finding synergies um, with our relationship with iPass is is that. It's not, you know, it, it, it's it, it's not necessarily an off an off the shelf sell. It's got to be um, positioned in a certain way to get the full benefits of it, and hopefully that's what together um, we're, we're striking a good chord with for for Indianos. Uh, excellent. So I, I guess as we uh, we're kind of coming towards the end of the uh, the session here, uh, Hamish, I, I know you've got a a slide that talks a little bit to the question, "Show me the money." Would you like to just uh, yeah yeah. For a few? Run through that, uh, and then uh, I guess we can open up. On. I didn't realise we had one more, didn't we? Yeah. Um, so I'll just I'll, I'll skim th I'll skim through this. Um, uh, th so this is a, a real world um, use case of a company in the US that worked on a Wi-Fi first strategy, um, and they did analysis to understand what uh, cost savings they could achieve with a Wi-Fi first strategy. Um, and by Wi-Fi first, we mean offloading of data, offloading of messages, and offloading of voice. So all three services. And um, uh, this is their users' actual usage profile, and it's actual um, real-life uh, MNO wholesale costs and Wi-Fi costs. So this is all very real data, um, very real use case, and it's indicative of what um, can be achieved by MVNOs with a Wi-Fi first strategy. But to caveat, um, every MVNO you know, will have its own scenario. Wholesale costs will be different. Wi-Fi costs might be slightly different. But in principle, um, this will stand true for, for any MVNO looking to do a Wi-Fi first strategy. So um, as an example, $30 worth of ARPU, um, voice costs at 266 using a Wi-Fi first strategy, 30p uh, for messaging, that's 1,000 messages and 500 minutes. I should go back and say it was 500 minutes. 
uh, $6 um, for data costs for 2 gig of data. Um, and that resulted in, with a Wi-Fi first strategy of roughly 75% of traffic going over uh, Wi-Fi, uh, a gross margin of 2110. Um, uh, sorry, yeah, gross margin of 2110 at 70%, which is a, a huge uplift for an MVO, uh, traditionally speaking. So, um, so this hopefully what we're trying to achieve here is, is that it's all good and well to talk about the benefits. People instinctively get it. But this is a real life case with real data points, um, you know, that all those strategy managers and all the CEOs and the product managers can take to their CFOs and say, "Look, here's the proof." Um, and, uh, and 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 I guess where you know there's different you know different things that an MVNO you know, can do with that with that um, savings on gross margin, um, but but all probably around how do I increase customer lifetime value? Um, I've got some money to spend now. What do I do? Uh, so it could be more aggressive pricing, loyalty retention offers, um, new R&D into products and services, um, you know, a device strategy, a sub subsidy strategy. Uh, it could be a whole lot of different things, but very nice margins to have flowing around, which aren't aren't necessarily usually there for an MBO. No, absolutely. I guess in in times where everybody's looking for differentiation, improved uh, improved margins, they're all things that uh, that help drive. Um, creativity around the other pieces to ensure that they reduce churn and, and clearly attract new customers, but 70% gross margin, very attractive bottom line number. This is it, exactly. So, I guess, um, just in closing there, um, the message is uh, we don't believe one size fits all, but we've got the components to, to be able to package a proposition uh, according to the MBO's particular market segment and market address. and. Um, we'd be delighted to uh, to take any questions either now or later on. Um, just lo looking at the uh, at the taskbar, I don't think there are any questions currently. So uh, I guess we uh, we close the session. I'd just like to thank you again, Hamish. Really appreciate you uh, you giving us your insights and uh, and experience. Um, we, uh, you know, it's good to be working with somebody who's an authority in the uh, the MVNO space. Somebody who's walked a mile in the other man's shoes, so to speak. So, thanks again, Hamish. Really appreciate it. Um, fantastic. Uh, the um, recording will be available um, if uh, if people would like uh, a copy of it, and yeah, we'd invite you to be in contact with us should you like to follow up and ask us any further questions. So, thanks very much. Have a great day, all, and uh, no doubt speak to you at some point in the future.